Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revit Snippets, great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. In today's lesson, we'll be looking at how to create custom graphics for section heads, callout heads, and elevation markers. This is for some of you who have particular requirements to get away from Revit default styles for these items, such as here when you have this hexagonal section head, or this diamond callout head, and also we can create a diamond elevation marker as well. So, let's get going. I will show you what we can eventually achieve in Revit. So, this is a new custom section head that I created just now. It rotates well to the section line at whatever angle you draw it. For example, this one here, you can see the bubble and the text really follow closely the line direction. Slightly easier is this callout head here, where you can just use a diamond shape instead of the Revit default circular one. And then we look at how to create this elevation marker, where you can have one elevation marker body hosting four different pointers to four different elevations. Alright, time to begin drafting. I will close this file real quick. And then we can create something in here in this basic sample project. Let's go to a floor plan now, maybe level 2. And let's create a default section line so we can customize it. Let's go to view section and I'll just draw a quick one here. Nothing fancy so far. This is a default section head and that's a default section tail. Let's change the head first. To work out which family to change to make this appear differently, you need to select a section line like this and then go to edit type. There's a section tag family. When you click on this line here, there's a button to edit the family it's referencing. Let's go there. And now you can see, under building section, this section tag family is referenced, and this family in turn references this other section head and section tail family. So multiple nesting level, that's why this chain isn't really obvious for new Revit users. Not to worry, I'll walk you through all of the steps to customize this icon quickly. Let's start with the head. I can see now section head is defined by this family here. You cannot edit this directly from here, so I can only highlight its name like this and press Ctrl C to copy it. We can now close these two windows. Go to the project browser, right click anywhere and choose search. It's time for me to now paste in the name that I copied and press next. That's the one there you see. I can now close the search box, right click on the family and then choose edit. And looks like we have found a secret. I can now replace whatever in here to represent the hexagonal section head that I showed you before. Let's start by deleting everything in here except from the labels. You have three to keep. This one is here, this one, and this one as well. The rest I can now delete. Now if you want to start the section bubble, it's crucial to know where to begin because eventually you want the bubble to be placed well on the section line its position should be in sync with the section line. To see the section line, I can now go to VV, Annotation Categories, and then turn on my reference planes. And now you can see, that's the section plane representing my section line. I can now clearly see the new section bubble representation should fit closely into this space here between these two other planes. Let's draw the hexagonal now. Let's go to Create, make a new line, and choose to make a polygon from center point. We can now change the size count to 6 to make a hexagon and then start drawing this hexagon from the center point of the previous section bubble. Now that I think of it, I shouldn't have deleted the previous bubble. Nevertheless, I can quickly now get that midpoint by drawing a temporary line from here to there. Back to hexagon now and that's the midpoint I can select. From there, I can draw my hexagon like this. Alright, much better already. Let's save this family under a new name. I'll call this one Section Head A. And then load it back into my project. It's loaded, nothing seems to happen. But now, if I go to here, edit type of section line again, we can now go to Section Tag, edit this family it's referencing. And then under section head, you can now choose section head A. That's the one we just created. 
click OK a few times. And now that new icon is there. Let's do a quick test to see if the detail number and sheets number will be working. I can now right click to open this new section. And the name is now section 1 obviously. Let's place it quickly on a test drawing, maybe this one. And now when I go back to my level 2 floor plan, suddenly enough I see my detail number and the sheet number where I can find this section. Next thing is to make sure this section bubble will work well when you place this line at an angle. I will try to rotate this now by a small degree, maybe 15. And you can see the bubble rotates well with the line, but not the text. We can fix this. Let's go back to the bubble head family. Click on the two texts. And untick this keep readable parameter under the properties. Untick this box. Next, you can go to this family category button there. And then tick this rotate text with component checkbox. OK to confirm. And now we're ready to load it back into the project. There we go. Now the text will always be aligned with the section line direction. Let's do the same customization now for the section tail. I can now go back to the type properties of my section. Back to section tag again. But this time instead of section head, I can check on the section tail element. And that's the family is using. Let's control C now to copy that name and find it here by searching for the same name it's there I can now edit this family as well and in here it's a bit harder to see where the session line will be in relation to this icon but the trick is now the same I can now go to VV go to annotation and again turn on my reference lines that helps a little but not much because now it can either be on that side or this side we need to have a test now to figure out. What I usually do is this. I will change this icon to be off center. So drag that line there. Remove constraints if I have to. So now it's off to one side. I can now save this under a new name again. Check until A. And bring it into my project. Let's put that to use now. Under edit types, you know the drill now. Check and tag. Instead of head, we go for the tail now. And I can choose section tail A. And OK to use it. So as you can see, the section line stops there at this point. But the tail is way off into the distance. Now I know that I put it in the wrong side in the family. Let's go back here and fix it quickly. We can now go to edit sketch and redraw this to be on the other side and with a slightly different dimension 5x5 five five will be good for now and now I can now save the family and load it back in again amazing, that's how you customize the section tail the main tricky thing is to figure out which side you should put the element on but once you've figured it out, the rest is easy Alright, so much for sections. Let's go and customize our elevation tag. We can now place the default one in here first. Let's go to view and place elevation. I can now place it somewhere here. So, when we see the elevation tag, it's slightly different from the section one. Because in here, even though you're seeing it as one single element, there are actually two elements attached to one another. And that's only at the beginning. If I now go and select this elevation tag, I can add additional elevations on the same body. That circular element in the middle, that's what we call the marker body. And the black triangle there, that's the marker pointer. At the moment, there's only one pointer to this body, but I can add three more. Let's try it out. One, two, three. Each one here will correspond to one of the new elevations that I just created. If I double click there, that will take me to this new elevation. The same for this one over there on the opposite side. And of course, this one as well. As a result, if you want to customize the look and feel of this element, you need to do it twice. I'll show you how. Let's say we can now select this item there, go to edit type, 
And now I can see this elevation tag parameter is now referencing this family there. That's the one I should go to, to modify the body and the pointer. We can now open it from here. And once again, there's a second nesting level. This 12 mm circle family is referencing, in fact, this elevation marker family. And the name is there, which I can now copy. Make sure you copy the family name only and leave out the type name. They are separated by this column here. So I will copy only everything before that column. Control C now. Close out the windows again. And now do the same search with another name now. So that's the one I was looking for. We can now right click there. And you guessed it, we can choose Edit Family. So in this family now, what we are looking at is one marker body in the center and four elevation pointers. Let's try to customize the pointers first. They are sharing the same family. That means if I edit this one here, the rest three of them will also update in the same way. We can now select this first one and do edit family. You can see now it's nothing more than two reference lines, a field region there, and a few labels on top for showing parameters. Let's move them up a little, make more space for our elevations below. And now this field region, I can now select it like this, and then edit this sketch. Let's say I want to go for a more linear look. I can now go and connect those points only by just a single line, and maybe fill it these two other lines. All right, finish to confirm. And you can see there are underlying lines underneath this field region. We don't really strictly need them, so I can just delete them like this. And now let's try to load it back into the elevation marker body family. It's saying there in the name as well. You see elevation mark body. I can now tick that box only and load this pointer into this body family. By the way, if you ever run into one of those random elevation marker family and wonder is that a body marker or a pointer marker, just go to here to the family categories button. And here you will see the elevation marker use. It should be either pointer and that's how you will know. All right, let's proceed with loading it into the body family now. Overwrite everything in there. And that looks much better already. I can now clean up this elevation body family just a little. For now, let's select those pointers and then hide them just for a moment. Because now I can go and delete this line here. This circle, I won't need it anymore. Now, when I reset the view, I can draw inside of that circle a new rectangle. Just from here, two clicks, and we're done. Let's now save this under a new name. I will call this one Mark Body A. And now it's time for this to join the project. Let's bring it into here. Here we go. That's already changed. However, don't be confused. Only the pointers have changed because we didn't rename the pointer family. This body family is still displaying a circular line. You see that? That circle there is from the previous body family. We should now replace it with a new one. I can now select it like this. Go to edit type now. Next step, go to elevation tag. And now make a new type from duplicating this one. Let's go this one box A. And now for elevation mark, I can use the new body and that's body A, I can see there. Click OK to confirm. And now when I do my selection, I won't see the circle anymore. It's clean now. Next step, let's check if our parameters or labels are working for this new family now. I can just go to a random sheet, maybe this elevation sheet there, and just place in here all the four new elevations that I just created. Maybe put them there. Position doesn't matter for now, but if I now return to my floor plan, I can see now that's detail number two for this elevation, and that's a sheet number for this whole elevation marker body. 
When I double click on this pointer to open the view, I can see that view name is now Elevation 1A. Let's proceed with placing Elevation 1B onto the same sheet. Maybe over there. And then return to the plan view. You see now, the new elevation that I just placed has taken over this number 4 as its detail number. Now before we move on, there's one small point of caution that you need to watch out for. You see this nice little sheet number there? It will only show as long as you have all your elevation pointers referencing elevations on the same sheet. For example, if I now place this elevation here on this same sheet, A103, this sheet number will stay there. But if I place this elevation on another sheet with another number, this number will then disappear from my elevation marker. Don't believe me? Let's prove it. I can now open this elevation view there. The name is Elevation 1D, yeah? I can now try to place it on a different sheet, maybe A101 there. Elevation 1D, let's put it here. Now, if I return to my floor plan, you can see that sheet number is now vanished because those elevations, they are no longer sharing the same sheet number and that's when Revit decided to remove it completely. So, just a thing to watch out for if you ever wonder where that number went away. Alright, so far so good. Let's try to now customize our callout bubble. Let's place the default one in here first. How about we can look at this detail here, where the stair meets my wall. I'm really interested in that detail. And here we go, that's the boring default callout tag. Let's now go to edit type. And you can see the callout tag is referencing this family there. I can now go to the family properties. And once more, we have the second nesting level. The callout head is actually using this nested family here. Once again, I can copy the family name, leave out the type name for now. Control C to copy. And do another quick search. By the way, if you don't like to right click and choose search every single time, maybe you think that's too slow, just select anything on this tree here and press Control F. That's a shortcut for this search command. I can now press Ctrl V now, paste a new name in, and there we go, that's there. Let's now right click to edit this family. This one is a lot more simple than the elevation marker one, even simpler than the section one. I can just replace this circle now with a diamond shape. Let's go to line now, draw a polygon with only four sides this time. From the center point there, I can draw it like this. And then maybe put in some fillets just to finish it off. Here we go. Now I can remove the elements I don't need. Amazing. We can now save this under a good name again. I will stick to the letter A this time. So call our head A. And bring it back into the project to join the party. We can now click on this, edit type, call out tag, and this time change that to reference my new call out head family. Here we go. If I now open this, I can see the view name is level 2 call out 1. That's the view over there. I can now place it quickly on this drawing. And certainly enough, if I go back to my plan view now, that's showing me the detail number of the view and also the sheet number, just like it should be. Alright, so that's how we can customize the appearance of those elements. If you enjoy this tutorial and like to have similar ones like this coming to you every single day, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.